Welcome to my channel folks. So far in the KMS webinar series, we have been seeing how to create keys, access those keys, encrypt and decrypt data and rotate your key after a certain period of time. In today's episode, we are going to see how to audit KMS access with CloudTrail. Say for example, you have a develop group of developers and accessing the key management service, they might be using the create function or create an alias function, disabling some keys or deleting some keys. So if you have a security team or a SecOps team in your environment and you want to give them access to find out who is accessing what and who is doing what, then what you typically do is you can go ahead and configure CloudTrail in your account so that all the API calls that are made to the KMS service are recorded there. Once you have KMS, what you can do is you can integrate KMS along with Lambda functions to trigger notifications to your Slack channel so that the monitoring teams can get immediate notification of whatever functions that are of interest to the SecOps team can be sent to the Slack channel. Say for example, an event of an unauthorized access happens to your KMS keys, then you can immediately trigger a Lambda function using the CloudTrail API for functionality and send it to your Slack channel and the team will immediately take the remedial action. Let us go ahead and see how we can do all this in our account. So there is a nice little GitHub article which details all the steps that needs to be taken for doing this activity. There are a few prerequisites. One of the most important thing is having CloudTrail pre-configured and ready for us to use. Uh, here in my account, I have CloudTrail configured for this region. You can see here we are in North Virginia and I have enabled for this region. As today you can configure CloudTrail for a particular region or all regions, make sure CloudTrail is in the region where you are trying it out. Likewise, in KMS, I already have a couple of keys. One of them is in pending deletion state. Another one is having a status of enabled. So we will try to access these keys or modify some attributes of these keys. So the next step is creating the Lambda function it itself. Let us go ahead and begin that. So I'm going to call my Lambda function. This Lambda function is written for Python 3.7. So you can go ahead and choose that. And I'm going to use an existing role. This is the one I was looking for. So now my Lambda function is created, then updating the code. The code is available in the GitHub article. You can so let me replace the existing code here. Just go ahead and save it. Now my code is also there. My role is also there. Now setting up my triggers so for triggers what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my cloudwatch event rules let us go to my event rules here click on rule and i want notification from my kms service so choose kms here and whenever there is an api call to kms i want to choose that so what i want to do is whenever there is a create key that is whenever somebody is going to create a key i want to get notified or whenever somebody is going to create an alias i want to get notified let us add So now we have added the functions that we are of interest, then add the target. We want our Lambda function here. So let us go ahead and say serverless KMS in, in sentry here and then click on save. Now our rule is also set. If we go back here and we can refresh our screen, our rule is also set and we will have our triggers here. So there are a couple of changes that we need to make. Remember I spoke about a Slack channel that we need to update. And if you come down to the code here, there will be a, a global variable section where it looks for your uh, Slack channel URL. So this is the section I'm talking about. We need a webhook URL. So if you have a Slack channel and you have an API configured, this is the Slack channel that I have going to use for this scenario. Calls, I call it as a bot assembly. You might call it anything you want. But if you go to the manage section of this app and under the incoming webhooks, you can go ahead, ahead and configure your webhooks. I've already done that. We'll see in a separate video how to do this. But if you have it already, just copy this and go to the lambda functions and in the environment variables what i'm going to do is i'm going to call this as webhook underscore url and put it so that one way one of the secure practices is going ahead and encrypting the webhook url itself and storing it as an encrypted cipher text blob here so that their uh, plain text information is not visible to everybody so once that is done, there is one last step we need to do. Just make sure whether the monitored function, that is the boundaries of the our sentry. Here you can see here I created create alias, delete alias and disable key. If we want to monitor create key also or add more functions, you just go ahead and add them. I will made a list of every function that is provided by a, a CloudTrail. 
but in this use case we are going to monitor only these four functions so go ahead and click on save now we have done everything that is necessary to go ahead and monitor it and get it in our slack channel so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to create a new key and see if it is going to appear here so here on the background you have the slack channel on the foreground i'm just going to create a key and usually it takes about 10 to 15 seconds for the lambda function to trigger after getting the notification from your cloud trail so once we get that entire process happened on the background you will see that uh, you will get a notification from uh, lambda and that gets updated in my slack channel and we will be able to see what function was done and who has done it so you can see here it has happened here and it says the user called a trainer for you and he's of type user i am user this is the arn and you can also see that the action of create key has been done if i go ahead and add an alias for this key using this key id we will be getting another notification let us go ahead and do that as well so let us go ahead and create an alias. I'm going to call it AV alias as a KMS Sentry demo. And there was already a demo alias. So I'm just going to update it. So I'm just going to say demo one here and see if uh, we are able to create an alias. Yes, we have done that. And in another about 10, 15 seconds, we should be able to get another notification in our Slack channel saying a new alias has been created for this key. There you go. You see that there. And if I go ahead and try to remove this alias, we will be getting a uh, notification. Since we tried to call the uh, create alias a couple of times, we get both the notifications. Now I'm just going to delete the uh, demo one alias and we will be getting a notification for that as well. If I go ahead and do the delete option of that key, that is the disable first and then delete, we will be getting another notification also. So that is how you typically create an a Lambda function which monitors certain critical operations on your KMS service and notifies you of that operations that is happening in your account. So it might be useful in scenarios where your environment is in a very regulated scenarios and you want to get notified about all those actions that is happening in your KMS service. Go ahead and try it in your account. If you have any problems or any difficulties, put them in the comment section. We all can learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.